<laughs> Looking good. Okay. We've been rolling. Okay, here we go. Think of the ocean. Picture it in your mind. Tonight, the breakers are thundering on the reef a hundred yards out, and beyond that, open ocean. What does this tell us about Jesus? What words come to mind? Majestic, powerful, wild, dangerous, tempestuous, like the clearing of the temple, but also gently playful as it laps at your feet. Reading the Gospels without the personality of Jesus is like watching television with the sound turned off. Chapter one, the playfulness of God and the poison of religion. He simply stands on the shore, hands in his pocket like a tourist, and asks the question curious passers-by always do of fishermen. Catch anything? The nonchalance of the risen Christ here is absolutely intriguing. Whatever Jesus is up to, the moment is loaded for his next move. Chapter six, extravagant generosity. And then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. Six stone jars, holding up to 30 gallons each. That would be 908 bottles of wine. Whoa, this is another scandalous scene. This fallen woman is wiping Jesus's feet with her hair and kissing them? She obviously has lost her capacity to care what the nice people think, and Jesus doesn't seem to have ever bothered trying that capacity on. Chapter 10, humility. The word of God had to learn how to talk? He who calls the stars by name had to learn the names of everything just like you? Jesus, this is a cup. Can you say cup? Cup. The guy walked on water, raised Lazarus from the dead. He never broke a sweat, right? But then what do you make of that terrible sweat in Gethsemane? Chapter 13, loving Jesus. Jesus is our life. We need Jesus like we need oxygen like we need water, like the branch needs the vine. But this Jesus, this beautiful outlaw, if his exquisite life were to invade ours, ah, it would change everything. It does. It will. <laughs>